want to welcome you back to another edition of Political Breakfast this week right here on WABE. Here today are our strategists, Democratic strategists, Darren Johnson and Republican strategist Brian Robinson here again. How are you all doing? It's uh, another long week, another busy week of politics, but that's good news for you, right, Brian? It's great news, but I'm look, all, all I'm thinking about by the time this show comes out on Thursday is Saturday when the dogs take on the Tigers at Mercedes-Benz <laughs> Stadium. I'm so excited to have college football back. As y'all y'all may be able to see, I'm wearing my my UGA helmet shirt yeah. here uh, on the screen. So I am Aww. super pumped about football season coming back. And I'm I you know we got a uh, shout out Georgia Tech though with that big win and hey. double it. Yeah. Man, that was something else. What that was that a good kick? stuff. Yeah, good yes. stuff. That was great football. Yeah, that's what football, told, every football game should be that way. Yeah. I told I told Bert Reeves, who's a former state representative who now works at Georgia Tech, he used to be Buzz, the mascot, when he was in college at Tech. <laughs> I told him, I said, I'm so excited for you guys. That was an exciting win. Great yeah. way to kick off the season. I want y'all to be highly ranked when Georgia beats you in November. <laughs> No, and, and so you said that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> to its um, face. Yeah, and I, I'll say this: we we usually make predictions about politics here on this show when we make predictions. And I want to say right now, as we enter the Labor Day weekend, I think my dogs are going to win the third out of uh, national championship out of four years <laughs> uh, in January, and I'm super pumped about it. And that that national championship game. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right here in Atlanta on the same day that the next president of the United States is sworn into office. You heard it right here on WABE. <laughs> I don't know. There, and have you forgotten that it's football to start a football no, season? No, go, it was, the, go, it was go. in the air with the with the yeah. weather. But yeah, yeah, yeah go, with all this politics. Dogs. I've been a dog fan all my life. Um, I, I grew up in Athens, so I've been you know going to UG game, UGA games all my life. So go dogs. But no, what I'm excited about is this tour championship. Um, you know, Alex Urban um, over at um, the Tour Championship um, staff, give a shout out to him and his committee. I'm on the host committee for that. We got 30 of the best golfers in the A right mm-hmm. now. And, and mm-hmm. shout out to Southern Company um, and Chris Womack and Coca-Cola and Accenture, uh, who were the three mm-hmm. sponsors for this tournament. And then and lastly, uh, Chad uh, over at East Lake, as you probably heard, Lisa, they just revamped the entire course. Um, yeah, so a lot started of last year. It. Yeah. And so this is a great initiative that does so much for local organizations like Drew Charter School. Uh, the, the, um, give a shout mm-hmm. out to Lillian Dear Nearly and the Cousins mm-hmm. Foundation. And so the work that they do for the community, the proceeds from this event that's in, in DeKalb County, uh, in mm-hmm. Atlanta, DeKalb. Mm-hmm. And then real quick, I got a shout out on um, Mayor Dickens. Yeah, he, he traveled over to Ireland for that Georgia Tech win. He's all mm-hmm. on Instagram. <laughs> and TikTok <laughs> turned up about this one point victory, yeah, um, uh, for uh, for Georgia Tech. But a no, shout out to the Jackets win. as well. Yeah. A win. Good a win, win is a win. Um, you were on the Dem- you were on the floor at the Democratic National mm-hmm. Convention, and, and we've talked about this, uh, but Brian, I while you were gone, um, Jeff Duncan uh, <laughs> giving that that big speech there. But what was it like for you to to see this state GOP leader? You know, on the floor supporting Kamala Harris. You know, I have a history on this podcast of talking about Jeff Duncan, right? I made the bold prediction. He almost did it, Lisa and Brian, that he was going to run for president of the United States of America. You guys may remember he flirted with the opportunity, the possibility of becoming a sort of a third party candidate. Jeff Duncan was a rock star in, in Chicago. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I saw him at the Intercontinental Hotel lobby. I saw him on the floor of, of the convention at the United Center. And he's a really good looking man. And as a, you know, as a straight man as myself, it's okay to say another man is good looking. And, I, and I'm jealous of his hair. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, what Jeff Duncan is he's doing. He's got the is, look, yeah, for it. Right. Rob is right. What Jeff Duncan is doing is is very dangerous. And I used that word in AJC recently, right? And a lot of people are like, what do you mean? Well, let me explain. It's dangerous, but it's necessary. It's dangerous because this man has gone against his Republican Party, a, a party that belongs to Trump. Um, you know, I've watched Brian over the years navigate. He's done a great job of tap dancing and doing this ballerina dance on this on this beam. I mean, he's got some Simone, you know, um, <laughs> so, bounce kind of skills. And seriously, but he's he's been able to navigate it, right? And I'm not saying he's all the way with Trump. I'm not saying he's against him. We'll get to that later with BK, who I believe is in an abusive relationship with Donald <laughs> Trump. Um, but, but, but what Jeff Duncan did, Lisa, is he said, you know what? 
I got plenty of money, and we can argue about how much money he has, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. This is a guy who started drifting away from the, the traditional Republican Party mm -hmm. that he once believed in. And for to go on a Democratic convention floor, Lisa, mm -hmm. that was bold. I mean, that is yeah. he will not be able to run as Republican. Now, yeah. is there an opportunity? I've asked him, why not become a Democrat? Switch parties. Well, he I'm, he, I'm he won't do it. He won't do well, it. Well, because because you got to listen to what he says. And this mm -hmm. is why, you know, a lot of his friends, you know, I won't say their names because they, these are some staunch Republicans in Georgia. They text me and say, well, why don't you thank Jeff Duncan for going out here and, and defending Kamala Harris? Well, thank you, Jeff Duncan, for doing that. I really appreciate you doing that. You, you're, you're standing up with this black woman and this white man from Minnesota. But when you listen to what he says, he says, hey, I still want the Republicans to win back the Senate. I want us to maintain our leadership in the House and grow it because why I he lists like maybe five or six conservative Republican initiatives. So we can't you know, you know I'm a big uh, fan of um, uh, Cool Breeze from East Point. Lisa, I'm going to take you back. Dungeon Family. And he has this song where he talks about you had to watch for the hook. You know, you got to listen to your corner and watch for the hook, right? So what that means is that Democrats, we got to watch for the hook with Jeff Duncan. Yes, he's he's done an admirable thing. It's very American, very Georgia for him to stand up. But at the same time, you know, he did reach out to a demographic of people in the Republican Party that I believe follow him. Now, it's not the majority of people. So now would, now would he continue to amplify this in the next few weeks, you know, months to come? Let's see. But I want to see Jeff Duncan go to some of these rural areas and these battleground states. You know, he's already here in Georgia, so we appreciate it. But would he go to Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Nevada, Arizona, North Carolina? and talk to those Republicans directly. I think that's how the campaign can really utilize him. But no, the energy was good. You know, Democratic Party, we, we're a welcoming party. You know, we, we're not going to boo you. We're not going to shout you down. We're not going to uh, flick you off with birds. You know, we're going to let you come in as long as you talking with some sense. And I think he talked with a lot of sense and he made a lot of good points. And he, man, he's going after Trump. And I'm just waiting for Trump to clap back on him soon now that him and Kemp are made up. So, Brian, yeah. are you thinking why not? Why not just switch parties? Why? Why do you have to go out there and I don't know? Is he is he embarrassing the Republican Party by doing this? No, but mm -hmm. here's the problem that Jeff is going to face. And if he does go out there on the campaign trail for the Harris Walls ticket, my advice to him is get paid for it. Right? I mean, ha have some sort of monetary return on doing wow. this because. Wow. Uh, look, you're you're lending your credibility to them. You are giving your time to them. Mm -hmm. Don't do this for free because mm -hmm. there's not a future for Jeff in the Republican Party. There's just not. And I, I um, uh, there's they're not going to welcome him back as as if you're a, a hardcore Republican. Your view is don't tell me you're a Republican when you're compare when you're campaigning for somebody that we see as potentially socialist or somebody far left. That's how much of the Republican Party sees her. And so they will never be able to square, even those who aren't crazy about Trump, that he went so far as to campaign for someone that they see as an unacceptable alternative, right? That is the reality. And he cannot win or, or run as a Republican. In fact, the state party has said he's not allowed to run as a Republican <laughs> Party in the state of Georgia. <laughs> They've said it, right? So uh, that, that's kind of you know where we are on that. Needs and, to but, leave, yeah. but, but, but like I, under, I understand what he's saying because there is this <laughs> element of the party, the people who've been Republicans for a long time, Trump has changed the party, not just in tone and tenor, but in policy. Mm -hmm. Give Trump some credit where it is due. He has been substantive. You know where he stands when it comes to immigration and illegal immigration, where it comes to trade with foreign adversaries. He, he's been, you know. You may not like the way he says it, but yeah. He, and you he, may not like the you policy. Know. If you're, if yeah. you're, you know, yeah. you may not like his views on NATO or his views on supporting Ukraine because his views are different than where the Republican Party was 20 years ago. And so for a lot of folks who were Republicans 20 years ago, they feel like they're in no man's land. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at Jeff Duncan feels like he's in no man's land. So there are a lot of those folks, though, who are like, they keep their mouth shut about one side mm -hmm. of it. And they say, I want Republicans to maintain control of state government in Georgia or in North Carolina or in Arizona. That down ticket stuff is what really matters to me because it impacts my quality of life. I think my party does a better job of running the state than the Democrats would, et cetera. And you can't, in reality, divorce the two. You can't go out there and tell the voters, vote against Trump, but vote Republican down ticket. Because 
it, it might make sense in a college classroom, but it mm-hmm. doesn't actually happen in real life in mass numbers. The people who do that are very tuned in voters who follow this stuff day to day. Those who can go line by line and make different decisions about the races, depend, you know, regardless of party. That's a very small group of people. So that is sort of the cauldron in which Jeff Duncan finds himself. And it's there's a short. He has life. no fear, though. He has no, no fear. You no, know, yeah. he's got. And, and he Theron's got money, right. Lisa. He got money. <laughs> I, I, I don't see. I think, I think Theron overstates that. I, I mean, he's like he's not like um, uh, Burt Jones rich, right? Burt Jones. Yeah, sure. he, I mean, Burt Jones. Yeah, Burt Jones rich. got some. Burt, Burt, Burt Jones got some bread. He got he got, the, he got that long family bread. You're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. That's right. And Jeff's a self-made person who's done well. But I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't. I heavily doubt he's like to me like 10 million dollars now works that's kind of like where you're you know that's i don't i don't think he's there right but anyway Ooh. regardless <laughs> and don't leave out reference burger we know reference burger no, oh some, man some, some, oh, no, 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 burger burger is another one no, he's he is another rich. one it's just coasting yeah, yeah for sure yeah and um, he's uh he built an engineering business and has done very well for himself. And like Brian Kemp's made a lot of money in the last few years. I mean, uh, well, he has, yeah. you know, he owns a lot of real yeah. estate in Athens. That that market mm-hmm. has done very well mm-hmm. uh, over the last yeah. ten years. So oh, hey, yeah. high more approval po- rating, more power to these honeymoon. Guys. He has no worries right now, does he? <laughs> oh yeah. man, he is a, he is he is riding high, man. He sure <laughs> is. Going to be my next. We're we going to try <laughs> next point, Lisa. I'm yes. going to talk about why why Brian Kemp doesn't need Donald Trump. Donald Trump needs Brian Kemp. Oh we'll my talk gosh, about that for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, yeah, let, let, let's talk about that. Then we can talk about the Kennedys last. Um, boy, the, <laughs> is that a sign to you, to both of you, that just how in need this Trump campaign is right now in wake of the Harris honeymoon? I mean, to extend himself, to kind of say, OK, yeah, Governor Kemp is kind of doing something right in Georgia uh, for me and my campaign. Where did that come from and why? Well, I'll, I'll go first. So I just mentioned earlier that, that that Brian Kemp is in an abusive relationship with Donald Trump. Let me let me explain that because I don't want the emails like B Rob got right. But what I, what I mean by that is is that look really quickly, sir. Governor Kemp handled the former president of the United States coming to Atlanta at the Georgia State Convocation Center and not only talking about him but talking about his wife. And one thing that you know I know that we all have in common is that you know no one can talk about our spouses, and it's particularly. The way that Governor Kemp initially clapped back on Twitter, correct me if I'm wrong, B. Rob, that was like he said basically, hey, keep my family's name out of your mouth. And that's the Brian Kemp I've known. That's the Athenian that I know that's on the 1979 uh, championship team from Clark Central High School. That's that guy who I know <laughs> went down to Jekyll Island every summer like I did and cut, you know, and was, was, you know, tan and sand all in his face. And he's been that grinder. All right, then we had we, all of us was kind of like quiet and B Rob. I think behind the scenes because I have been on the podcast, so I didn't talk to B Rob. Believe y'all or not, we don't talk every day. Um, people Republicans were saying, "Hey Trump, hold on, brother, you are messing with the wrong guy. If you're messing with Marty Kemp and you're messing with Gavin mm-hmm. Kemp in this state, you're settle gonna down." Yeah. So, so when I talk about abusive relationship, this is a man who has dealt with Trump year after year. Trump comes down here and says bad things about him. He says bad things about him from the White House. He criticizes him. He blames him for his loss. And now he's saying that he's trying to make it hard for him to win. That's why I mean that it's abusive. And when I say that Brian Kemp doesn't need Donald Trump, Donald Trump needs Brian Kemp, is because the the Trump people said, all right, man, we're going to win Georgia. We got to make up with this governor. But more importantly, making up, Brian Kemp is a statesman for him to go out and, and do something he hasn't done up until recently, until last week. And that is to say, I am going to vote for Donald Trump. I am going to endorse his campaign. His wife, Marty Kemp, um, who many of us believe has a great deal of influence in that Kemp household, um, said that she was not going to vote for Donald Trump. She was going to write her husband in. And so Trump had to he needs to be so appreciative that you have a governor who's willing to do that. Lastly, and, I, and I'll say this. We can learn something from the Republicans, though, as Democrats. One thing about the Republicans, they believe in this my team versus their team. And I think that's what happened in the last few weeks. You know, when I look at Senator Gooch, who's the majority leader in the state Senate down here, a good friend of mine, you know, immediately going to Twitter and saying, hey, they made up like all these Republicans. Yeah. Like, hey, look yeah. at everybody. And yeah. Brian is about to yeah. tell us how this love affair, which is abusive at times, um, <laughs> is continuing uh, to thrive. But but make no mistake, BK is very specific. <laughs> he wants to win, Lisa. And so for oh, him yeah. to put his pride aside <laughs> and say, hey, I'm going to support this and to and for Trump to 
you know, do yeah. it Trump's way to say, hey, yeah. he's all of a sudden good. Mm -hmm. was the right thing to do, I guess, for Republicans. But I don't know how long it's going to last. And I think that a lot of it is political theater, uh, because at the end of the day, you can't tell me that Brian Kemp, the governor of the great state of Georgia, does not have fundamental issues with the flaws mm -hmm. that are that uh, that that Donald Trump himself personally in, in, like in, embodies and the flaws of his campaign. But he's yeah. he's come out. He said we're united and we'll we'll see how it. Yeah, how he's it known all along that Trump needed him. He's known Absolutely. that all along. Right, Brian? Yeah, this is a win-win for both sides, though, right? Both sides wanted this to happen. It doesn't do Brian Kemp any good to get beat over the head by the nominee of his party and po constantly put into this adversarial position with Donald Trump. Two, Brian Kemp wants Donald Trump to win Georgia. Brian Kemp does not want Donald Trump beating him over the head on social media and from the lectern in Georgia rallies. Brian Kemp doesn't want there to be a Democratic win in the state because that could have down-ballot repercussions for Republicans in the General Assembly. Brian Kemp wants to make sure we maintain Republican majorities in both houses. So he has many reasons of self-interest to want Trump to win in Georgia. And for Donald Trump, I think he went out there, attacked Brian Kemp, and saw that it wasn't a good, a good strategy. You had state legislators who are huge Trump fans who desperately want Trump to win. People who are true MAGA believers, like they think that this guy is great, who got up and walked out of that rally at Georgia State's arena because— they were, they were put in this impossible position. They work day in and day out with Brian Kemp. They support his agenda. They support the leadership that he has shown to the state. They got up and left. They should have been in a better world and if, take, taking pictures from the rally, showing the enthusiasm, showing the unity. Instead, they were leaving. Also, Brian Kemp's got the gold standard in grassroots turnout operations in the state of Georgia. He won by a huge margin in 2022 because his team was excellent. They just were firing on all cylinders. They had a well-funded ground operation. And Brian Kemp's got another well-funded ground operation going on right now. Let me – I'm going to steal a, word, a phrase from Theron. Theron always says we're going to take you behind the scenes. I'm going to take, take you behind the scenes here, okay? <laughs> so one thing the Herschel Walker and Donald Trump people resent about Brian Kemp is they accuse him and his operation of identifying Kemp Warnock voters and then turning them out in a way that hurt Herschel Walker. Now, I will leave it to others to tell us whether or not that is true, but that is a very real point of contention between those two parties. What Donald Trump can't have is Brian Kemp pissed off and out there identifying Harris Republicans, like people who are going to go vote for Harris and then vote down ticket Republican. His his operation has the power to go identify those voters. They're in Cobb. They're in Gwinnett. They're in North Fulton. We know where they are, right? Forsyth. At <laughs> Forsyth County. That's another one. Yeah. So if Kent really wanted to call, go cause some trouble, he could do that. Donald Trump doesn't want Do uh, Brian Kemp to do that. And at the end of the day, it, that's not good for Brian Kemp either. Because, again, mm -hmm. it's better for Brian Kemp for Donald Trump to win in Georgia. It keeps Democratic money out in the future if it's not seen as a prime place to play. If Democrats think they're going to win here, we've seen what they'll do. They'll pour $100 million in. They uh -huh. did it for Stacey. They did it for Warnock. <laughs> we yeah. don't want that, right? We don't want to be the Democrats' radar. We want to be like, this is a, this is a, a red-leaning state. Y'all go play in Wisconsin mm -hmm. and somewhere else, right? Just, yeah. Or Pennsylvania. Just stay out of here. So yeah. Brian Kemp has every reason to have this peace pact. Yeah. Donald Trump has every reason. So this is this is self-interest defined. Yeah, he has <laughs> mastered the game of politics and, and is very, very strategic in this as well. Before we get out of here, because I've teased it, uh, the Kennedys, we talked about this switcheroo that, that's going on. And I don't know, is it becoming a trend? We've got RFK Jr. pulling out of the presidential race now saying he is going to back Trump. And I'm thinking the whole time are those... Kennedys, those beloved Kennedys that are resting in peace, are they rolling over in their graves right now with this with this latest move by RFK? I'll let Barry start on that one. <laughs> yeah, look, the, the, real, real quick, the, the, yes, real quick. The Kennedys are definitely rolling over in their graves, Lisa, and the family is tossing and turning in their beds because. Right. But, but let me let me do this. I'm not going to be what I what I don't like about my party and and being being perceived as one of these elitist, you know, Democrats, right? And I usually add the word liberal on there, but I'm I'm not 
that liberal. Um, <laughs> progressive, but, but, but progressive, <laughs> progressive, but not as liberals. Yeah. So Lisa, RFK Jr. can do whatever he wants to do, right? This is a free country. Clearly, he has decided to suspend his race and support Donald Trump. I have an issue with that. But my bigger concern is where does his supporters go? And we cannot fool ourselves. He mounted a serious campaign. And I have a lot of people who come up to me in this state when I traveled around the country and they talk about him. And and Lisa, you'll be surprised, but the majority of them are young voters. So what the Democratic Party is going to do and what I'm doing right now is to say to these RFK Jr. supporters, please join this Harris Walls campaign. Do not follow his endorsement with Donald Trump. We want to earn your support because that is how these elections are going to be won. Now, what RFK Jr. does and how he would be embraced in this MAGA Republican sort of strategy yet to be seen. But his endorsement of Donald Trump uh, is significant. Now, is it going to help Donald Trump win the race? I don't think so. But I'm more concerned about how do we as Democrats appeal to his supporters? I think the family has spoken out against this endorsement. That's not what they want. Um, Clearly, he's got some family matters that he's got to deal with. But ultimately, I would not be one of these elitist Democrats and come out here and ignore the fact that this man did mount a campaign and he did have some support out there that's up for grass right now. Could make a difference. right? Good answer. Good answer. That was very reasonable. Uh, The Trump campaign on Friday put out a memo uh, on the data they have on the RFK Jr. voters. And this is before RFK pulled out and endorsed Trump. What they were saying before was that without RFK on the ballot, the RFK Jr. voters were breaking heavily toward Trump. And Theron was hinting at the fact that Democrats seemed to know that. So in Georgia, it was by a 19 percent margin. But in Nevada, it was by a 50 percent margin. Now, granted, Nevada is going to be a much smaller vote number than than here. But the, no, sorry, it was 13 percent in Georgia. And that that came out to about 19,000 votes, which is more than the margin that we had in 2020. In Arizona, it was 44,000 votes that, uh, again, more than the margin uh, of victory in that state in 2020. So we do. If this is a net positive today for the Trump campaign. It's something for them to celebrate. And look, after a good week for the Democrats, they had a good convention, a lot of energy. The uh, endorsement of Trump on Friday gave the Trump campaign a momentum news cycle coming out of the Democrat news, uh, news cycle. So that was that was good in and of itself. I, I, I'm not much of a fan of the, the anti-vax stuff. Uh, if you're going to give me something that, keep, that will keep me from getting sick, put it in my arm. I'm cool with it. I believe you. But uh, I will say what RFK is saying about some of the food processing and food uh, supply lines in this country, that is something that is sinking in with like Gen X moms. And uh, I mean, I, I'm hearing oh, it. Yeah, and, foodies, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, about all this processed foods and all these chemicals that are in it that are addictive and making us fat and unhealthy and and mm-hmm. unhappy he talks about the mental health aspect i i think people can like write him off as a kook all they want but they do it at their own peril to some degree because some of what he is saying has merit and look i, I eat processed food i love a good hot dog i love some mm-hmm. processed meats on a jersey <laughs> mike sub right i love it but Get old hot dog out of I, dogs. Game. I love it. I love it. But I also understand that I that that it's, it's troublesome and that Americans have gotten too <laughs> fat because of it. We, I think we, li- we, need to listen, we need to listen to some of what he's saying here. Yeah, yeah. What a week in politics, and and another one to come. So thanks again, you guys, and uh, we'll see you soon.